Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this presentation. This is a webinar that we did the other day. We had some technical difficulties, so Nathan and I wanted to re-record it, and we actually thought of a better way to show off the functionality, so we'll incorporate that as well. So if you join the live one, this is gonna be a little bit different presentation for you, but uh, if you, this is the first time seeing this, then um, hopefully this information gets conveyed a little bit better than we had initially planned. So um, just to kind of introduce myself, who, who you've got here, you've got me, I'm Steve Olson. I'm the manager of training services with Mesa. Uh, I'm an Audita certified instructor, also set, certified in Inventor. I've been at Mesa for 12 years, doing a bunch of Inventor training, Vault training, part of the Vault team in general. Um, doing a lot of different training, consulting, support work. Before Mesa, I spent five years at a company called Fleetwood Folding Trailers. They unfortunately are now out of business, but they made pop-up trailers, the one where the roof comes up and the beds slide out. Uh, I did that for five years using Inventor, AutoCAD, Vault, a little bit of Pro-E, um, and then also Anvil, which is a, a just an ancient project or, or uh, product. And also with me is Nathan Bowser. He is part of our design services team. He's been with Mesa for quite some time now. He's going to kind of show, help me show you the collaboration side of this. And, and I'm going to put files in. He's going to take over, do his side of things. And, and it's going to hopefully paint a more complete picture for you than if just me doing this by myself. So uh, Nathan, you wanted to say a little bit about yourself, how long you've been at Mesa, what you kind of do on a normal basis? Sure. Uh, as you said, I'm a member of the des uh, design services group, um, the design automation specialist. I've been with Mesa for eight years now, coming up on, I think, nine. Uh, and I've done everything from, uh, you know, inventor uh, training to product development to automation and pretty much anything I can get my hand in. So, Thanks for having me on today, and I look forward to uh, showing off how, the, how this works. All right, great. Thank you, Nathan. So just a few questions here that you can kind of ask yourself as we go through this here. Uh, are you collaborating outside your company's walls with vendors, contractors, et cetera? Are you kind of always having to send files to folks? Are you doing that with, you know, constantly all the time with multiple parties? Are you kind of like, eh, maybe once in a while I need to do this or pretty much just never? Um, so probably fall into one of those three categories. If you're already doing that, what are you using to collaborate at this point? Are you using things like Box and Dropbox and Google Drive, SharePoint? You know, just kind of think for a second what you're using. You might be using Vault Professional uh, already at this point, which would then... Uh, allow you to replicate dat data between multiple different sites. This technique is going to be uh, obviously not as robust as that, but it's going to definitely have some some techniques that are going to be similar to that and also are going to be a little bit less of an overhead uh, just because of what all goes involved. So my objectives for what we're going to take a look at is I want to introduce Project Sync, what it is, how it came about, what its purpose is. I want to explain the role of each piece of software in the process. We're actually going to be introduced to really, we're going to have four main players. We're going to have Vault Professional. We're going to have the job processor. We're going to have uh, the desktop connector. And we're going to have the um, Fusion Team Hub, Fusion Team Site. We're going to talk about what each of those do. We're going to discuss our, or maybe introduce you to Fusion Team and the Desktop Connector. If you haven't seen those or heard those before, uh, those will be new to you. And we're also going to demonstrate how the files are synchronized, how this really works. There's a couple things in play here. It's it's really smooth and easy once you get it set up, but there's a couple dominoes we got to get set up and knocked down in the right order here. So let's talk about what Project Sync is. It was introduced with Vault Professional 2019. It's in all the Vault Professional products since then, 2019, 2020, 2021. It allows you to synchronize data to a Fusion Team hub or Fusion Team site. 
So I can take uh, a folder and then just basically synchronize that out to a Fusion Team Hub. My folders are mapped from a vault folder to a Fusion Team project slash folder. I can push files, I can pull files, or I can have it be kind of both directions. I can automate the synchronization with a schedule. I can set up a schedule that it happens at a specific time each day, every so many hours. I can also, again, do this on demand if necessary, that I do it manually. A couple pieces that you're gonna kind of, are gonna have to have in play, but you're not really gonna see working is the job processor and the Autodesk desktop connector. These are the ones that are gonna do the heavy lifting. The vault's gonna be the source of the data. The Fusion Team site is gonna be where the data gets pushed, but the job processor and the desktop connector are gonna be the two things working hand in hand, passing files back and forth uh, between the vault server and the, uh, the Fusion Team hub. The end user can install the Autodesk desktop connector on their own machine. And what's kind of great about this is it will create like this phantom drive, at least that's what I call it. It basically shows Fusion as a drive, almost like a map drive. And I can browse to that right directly. I can set up an inventor project file that uses that as my workspace. And so these consultants can basically just set that project up or that inventor project up to use that Fusion uh, drive as their workspace and kind of just work on files pretty seamlessly. And we're going to show you that here uh, as we get into the demonstration in just a few minutes. So let's just kind of make sure everybody understands the key components of what role they're going to play. So we've got Vault Professional. Uh, that's going to be your main data source. We always talk about the, 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 the source of truth, the main data source, where are we going to rely on as being, okay, if this, this is going to be what we rely on as being correct. That's going to be our vault. Fusion Team Hub is going to be your cloud access point for your collaborators. You're going to have the files pushed out to that Fusion Team site. You're going to then invite people into that project via their email address because Autodesk treats the email address as, unique, as your unique identifier. And then you'll invite them in and you, you'll have control of allowing them in or out and when the project is closed out, if they don't have access anymore, you just remove their, their invitation or their access to that access point. The job processor is one of the, the um, applications that will run on basically a vault client that basically is then schedules these tasks. It's actually past these tasks. It's the one that passes the files to the desktop connector and the desktop connector is what basically moves files from the PC to the cloud. So basically what's gonna end up happening here, I'll kind of give you a map of the process. We're gonna start with our vault. Our vault is our, our source of truth. It's gonna pass files to job processor, which is gonna then pass information to the desktop connector, which is then gonna push information to Fusion Team. And really, if we're going the other direction, it would go from the from Fusion Team, the desktop connector, the job processor would then put it back into the vault. So the setup here, what, what do we need to do to get this setup right? So the first thing is we need to have a Fusion Team um, site here, a Fusion Team hub. Um, and this will actually requires a license. This is the one thing here that uh, if you don't already have, it would incur some sort of cost. Fusion Team is a relatively inexpensive product. In the grand scheme of things, it's probably one of the more uh, affordable pieces of software. The last time I checked, you can't hold me to, to, to this, this is a recording, so we might uh, things might have changed. But the last time I checked, it was about $125 a seat per year. So that's pretty affordable there uh, in the grand scheme of things. So we have to have a site. We have to create the folder that's gonna receive the data. Uh, we're then gonna go into the vault, make sure the job processor is enabled, make sure the job processor is running on at least one client machine. And the best machine for that might be the machine that you use for an intern or a spare machine. Um, it's best to not run it on a, some, a, a heavy user's machine because it's gonna be competing for processing power 
Um, but the inter an intern machine would be a perfect example of, okay, well, this guy works part time, so he doesn't need it all the time. The job processor would be really good, um, really good to have on that machine. If it slows down the intern, it's not going to be that critical. It's just an intern. They're not probably doing some of the the heavy uh, lifting or some of the heavy duty full um, work of the of, of the system here. Uh, so we'll then, once we've got the job processor set up and running, we'll map our folders. We'll just have to kind of create a, a mapping here. So we'll go in, we'll configure it, we'll basically create a mapping or edit one. We'll then name our mapping. We'll give it the vault folder that we're connecting into, the cloud drive folder we're connecting into, and the screenshot kind of like right here in the middle, the bottom half of that is scheduling. So I'm basically, I can tell it if I'm gonna do one direction or bi-directional, I can set up, okay, what time of day do I wanna do the synchronization? Do I wanna do it every eight hours? Eight hours is the minimum. You can set that longer, obviously, but eight hour, every eight hours is the minimum. And then you can say, well, now nah, I just wanna do it manually. And, and that's fine too. It's up to you kind of how you wanna to go about this. And then again, the last part here is the job processor. So you basically have to make sure it's configured. Um, we typically, what we typically do for customers is we recommend creating a user uh, named job processor and then have that job processor carry out the task. That way it's a little bit easier. You don't necessarily want to have this as being one of your other users that are logged in or the admin it makes a lot of sense to just name a user job processor and have them carry it out because also whenever it tags um, versions and things like that in the vault that, oh, th this, this user did that, you can tell it was the job processor that did that. So username, password, server you're logging into. And then once the job processor is on, you can kind of check and see what job types it's allowed to do. And I will share with you one thing I've learned through the couple of times of setting this up. We actually had one customer that their, their sync processes were failing. What we discovered was on their server, the job processor was starting before the desktop connector. So all of these processes that I have here highlighted, these are the, the synchronization processes or the tasks that the job processor is allowed to do. And what we were discovering was because the job processor was starting before the desktop connector, these were all disabled or not in, uh, not turned on. So we just had to kind of manipulate their server a little bit to make sure that the desktop connector launched first and then the job processor. And then everything started working a lot better for them. So that's just something else to kind of keep in mind uh, and also just a lesson I've learned as we've been setting these up uh, with customers. All right, so now we're gonna get into some demo. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of uh, go into a vault. I'm going to set up the mapping, kind of show you a few of the things that would go into setting this up. Then I'm going to push some files out to the cloud, and I'll turn it over to Nathan. He's going to show you how it would look or how how a consultant would interact with this if we've um, if you actually apply this. So I'm, let me kind of get out of this here. Let me go to my vault. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my tools, go to my administration. My global settings, this is where I can make sure that my job server is enabled. It's sometimes called job server, sometimes called job processor. The, the names are pretty much interchangeable. Um, I call it the job processor, but realistically in, in here it's, it is called the job server. So now I'm gonna go back in administration vault settings under my collaborate tab. You can see project sync management. I'm gonna configure this. What I have here is I have a clamp folder. You can see over here in my browser tree. I'm gonna synchronize that out to my, my hub here. So I'm gonna create a new mapping. I just like to call it whatever the folder name is, just that way it's a little bit easier for me to understand um, what's going on. So I got my clamp. I'm gonna say my vault folder is my clamp folder. And I need to have a folder on my cloud drive to receive this. And I just remembered, I don't have that set up yet. So I'm gonna go and open up my Fusion Team site. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'll call it Clamp. So now I got my Clamp folder. 
So now if I go back over to Vault here, I should be able to, under Fusion, here's the different hubs that I've been invited to. I've got one for Mesa Training, a Mesa one. There's a couple customers that invited me to some of their hubs for different uh, purposes. So there's my Project Sync demo. There's my Clamp folder. Say OK. And then down here, you see uh, Schedule Folder Sync. I'll say yes. I'll call this. Uh, we'll synchronize our Clamp folder. And I'll make it bidirectional. You can see here I can apply selected action to subfolders, and that's that's good. I want to synchronize all the folders. If I add one, I don't want to have to to set that up. The other one here is the sync hidden files. I want to mention this because the hidden files are typically your viewables, your DWFs that you use for viewing, and those are really important here in the Vault client. However, the Fusion team actually has a lot of view. Um, pre-built viewers, and it actually is able to view a lots of different files. So I don't necessarily need to synchronize my DWFs up there. And to make things easier, I'm not going to synchronize them because that's just extra files that has to bother with syncing. Realistically, I can just view these files right inside of the, uh, the Fusion team site. I can view DWFs, IDWs, uh, IAMs, IPTs, and a whole host of other ones. I think there's a, a very daunting list of how many different files you can preview right inside of Fusion Team. So I'm not going to even bother uh, se selecting that sync hidden file. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. You can see over here on the schedule, I can say daily at a specific time or every eight hours. For some reason, I can't go any less than eight hours. You can see eight, 12, or 16, which We'll go with eight just because it's the shortest cycle. Uh, I'll say OK. And now my mapping is set up. I'll say close, close. And now let's check the, jo the, the job processor, see if it has any tasks. Uh, the job processor sleeps for 10 minutes and then wakes up and looks for tasks. So I'm just going to pause and resume it, which will kind of prompt it to wake up so it can start looking for tasks. So I'll pause, resume. Now you can see here it's scheduled sync because it's every eight hours it says, okay, I should do this now. So it's synchronizing those. So now you can see it's going to transfer the files out to the cloud. And once this bar is done, we should be able to jump out to our, our site. You can see we've got our clamp folder here. Here's all the files. So I now want to include Nathan on this workflow. So right now he actually doesn't have any access to this. So I'm gonna go over here to my project details and I'm gonna manage members. And it's really easy to invite somebody. All I gotta do is use their email address that is tied to their, to their Fusion account. And I know Nathan's email. So Nathan Bowser at Mesa dash cad.com. I can tell if he's going to be an editor or just solely a viewer. I'll say he's an editor. I'll send my invitation and you can see here he is. So now he should have access to this. Um, all he's had to do is install the desktop connector and this should start synchronizing these files from the Fusion site down to his, um, his Fusion drive, which is essentially on his C drive. So let's go ahead and pass this over to Nathan so he can then show us what's going to look like to interact with the files on his side. So Nathan, I'm gonna make you the presenter now. And we'll take a look and see which what it looks like on your end. Okay, thanks Steve. So I've installed the desktop connector on my local machine and that's given me access to Fusion 360 hubs, which puts a drive right here in uh, my this PC folder uh, on my machine. So if I dig into that, I can see I've been given access to this Mesa Inc. hub, and I have access to a few projects that you've added me to. So if I look in the Project Sync demo folder, we have that clamp folder that you gave me and all the files that you've uploaded. Uh, I've gone ahead and added a project file right here above that clamp folder so that right in Inventor, I can link out to that project and have it set up to work right there on the Fusion 360 drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and open 
this clamp. Let's say I need to make a change to this file for you. I'm gonna open the clamp assembly. We're gonna see that's actually gonna actively go out to Fusion 360 and pull that uh, data down from the hub to work on it local. So this will take a second to open as it gets that from the, the online hub out there on the cloud. And once this opens, I can work on it right here local. We can see here in the browser that we're seeing these files have a cloud next to them. This is a cloud file. It's not stored on your machine. It's out there in the cloud. So I want to make a small change to this. So to do that, I want to add a handle uh, pin. And what I'm going to do is go out to the clamp folder. And I've already created the pin. I'm just going to copy it out there to that location. It's going to find the right project file already. We're going to go ahead and drop that file there. Now I can place right from that Fusion 360 hub that file I just added. So if I dig in here and grab the handle pin, drop that in. I'm just going to quickly constrain this here. Good enough. I'm going to save this file. It's going to migrate it. I'm going to go ahead and open the drawing. So we'll go ahead and update the drawing too. Again, this is going to have to go out to the cloud, pull that drawing down, and give us access to it. Now, while this is doing that, I have another project that I want to work on with you. So I have this vice project here on my local machine. I'm just going to drag and drop that out there in that project sync demo folder. Now, I kind of glazed over this before. This uh, is set already because I've used it before. The first time you may have to select the appropriate project file, but it'll remember that project file each time you go to put more files in there. So this is gonna start uploading. Here, it's off on my other screen. It's gonna start transferring these files up, up there to the cloud. So they come back over to this clamp IDW. I can see now it's been updated. We have that pin in there. Uh, I could balloon it on a couple of these views, save that drawing with those updates. Again, it's going to need to migrate, and it's going to immediately push that back up to the Fusion 360 hub. And I think, unless I'm missing something, Steve, it's back to you. If you unmute. All right, let me take uh, show my screen again here. All right, do you see my screen now, Nathan? I do. All right, great. So here I'm going to do a refresh on my hub. We should see the files that Nathan has added. So there's the clamp, there's the vice. And just to show you, um, I can look at some of these things here right inside of the, the hub. You know, he made a change to this clamp. I can look at this. I can see he made these changes. I actually can look at the different versions. I can view them right in here. So even though I might be, um, you know, somebody just participating in this just as a viewer or as a reviewer or something like that, I don't necessarily have to have access to any kind of CAD software to do the viewing and participate in this. You can just view files right in here. And this is what I was talking about earlier, not needing to have the, um, the the viewable files that DWS pushed up as well, and I can also even say, well, I want to look at the different uh, the different versions. And for some reason, that I was getting a little bit of an error message there. It's kind of funny, um, but there's some different versioning tools I have here as well. But let's get back to our main workflow here. So. We've got these new files. I want to now pull these into my vault. So I'm going to go over to vault. I want to make sure I have a mapping for that clamp folder as well. So I'm going to create a vault folder for that vice that Nathan added. And now I'll create a mapping for that. New, we'll call this Vice, my vault folder, 
It'd be the vice folder mapped to the vice folder that Nathan uploaded under my project sync demo. And I'll schedule a synchronization. We'll go with every eight hours on that one as well. Say OK. Say close. Close. So even though I scheduled it, maybe I want to actually pull the files down now. So what I could do is I've got this folder selected here. Actually, I don't really even need to have that selected. I have this download from Cloud Drive up here at the top. It will show me all the mappings I have created. Let's say I want to make sure I get this vice pulled in. I'll say next. It's going to show me all the files here that are out there for me to pull down. I can select just one or all of them. I'll select all of them. I'll tell it to download. And then that will get added to the queue. And while I'm here, I also will do the same thing for the Fusion Clamp folder. Tell it I know that Nathan's made some changes here. I'll just do like a Control A, tell it to download those. And now let's just make sure the draw processor isn't sleeping. So I'll pause it, resume. And there it's going to take off. It's going to start doing those, those tasks. You can see it starts pulling the files in. So it gave it a lot of files to pull in. I even uh, some of the, I even, uh, some of the stuff was scheduled. Some of it was manual. So it, it had a, it kind of was pulling double duty there. But now if I do a refresh, you can see I've got all the files here from Nathan's. Uh, this clamp, you can see here, I even have some local files that says, oh, you're out of date on these. But let's say if I look at this assembly here and I can look at the history of it, you can see that the most recent version of this was downloaded from Cloud Drive. It was the job processor created it just, to, just now and it was pulled down from the Cloud Drive. Uh, same thing with the drawing. And here with these vices, if I pull, pick one of these parts here, you can see downloaded from Cloud Drive, the job processor does it. That's why I mentioned earlier about having a, somebody tagged as the job, or not using a regular user tagged as the job processor, having that as its own specific user. That way you can see um, you know, the job processor is doing it and not that it looks like Steve did all of this or the admin did all of this. You can tell that the job processor, or you can at least separate the job processor stuff from what the um, from what that that uh, that user actually does. And at this point here, it becomes part of my vault. I can make changes. I as I make changes, it'll be pushed up. Now, one thing that uh, I do want to point out here is Vault Professional. This is part of Vault Professional, and a lot of our users that are using Vault Professional have a lifecycle system here. And one of the things that I, I wanted to test very early on is how does the syncing ha uh, kind of work with um, the, the lifecycle scheme? If I've got something released and somebody changes the, the cloud file, what happens? What we discovered was is that because the file is released and it is read only in the vault, it will not pull the file out from or pull the file in from the cloud because it's like this file is released. I cannot change it. Now, if you had it in a scenario where the job processor could change that file, it might still pull it in. But I don't think that would be a scenario that you want. You'd want to kind of keep it that it's released. If you then put it to a work in progress, you can then tell it to pull the cloud file in and it will actually update. So there's a few things here that that's smart enough to kind of to, to not do or kind of. Uh, create some havoc, but you got to be a little bit wary of that because it's not even going to error at that point. If you tell it to synchronize when a file is released, there's a file out there. It won't error. It just won't do anything. Another scenario that we've run into recently is a customer was having issues getting a bunch of AutoCAD drawings from their client into their vault. And the reason being there was the auto loader wasn't working because there was X references from those CAD files to other files that wasn't part of that clump or that data set. We said, hey, how would this work if that was the case? If the, uh, if the customer uploaded a bunch of 
AutoCAD files, say 200 AutoCAD files, would Vault pull them in if it had missing X references? And what we found out was, no, Vault won't do that. You know from working with Vault, even you know just checking things in and out, if all the references aren't in line, Vault's not gonna take the data. Same thing holds true with the project sync. If there's a missing X reference to the file that was uploaded, it won't pull it in. It won't show you an error. It'll throw a, an error into the job processor log saying, hey, I can't, I'm missing this reference. You'd have to dig through it and find that out. It won't give you a big message on the screen. But what I found out was I pushed the file up there. It was missing an X reference. Wouldn't, wouldn't synchronize, wouldn't get pulled in. As soon as I put the, the, the X reference that was missing into the cloud, it pulled them both in. So just kind of be aware of that. Uh, it's gonna be very picky about the references just as if you know it was Vault checking it in from a local C drive. All right, so that is what we had uh, to show you as a demo. So just want to kind of a question here to kind of share with you that, uh, that I wanted to kind of kind of get you to think about here is now that you've seen Project Sync in action, do you feel that this would make collaborating your projects easier? The one thing that I was kind of going to say is uh, whenever it comes to setting these up, you know, you do need that, you know, seat for Fusion uh, team for whoever's going to be accessing it. Realistically, on the ownership of the vault, you really just need like one seat, maybe two, to assign that to that, that can then push that data out to the cloud. Basically, my job processor has me logged into it, so it has connection to that cloud. Um, so you'd have at least one user, maybe two for that. On the customer side of things, when you're creating these collaborative projects, that's something you can discuss. Is that something that you'll purchase for them and then um, a lot, and then assign access to them, or are they gonna have to buy their own to bring that to the table? That's kind of a discussion you guys can have when you're gonna get into these collaborative projects. From the vault side of things, if you wanna turn off their access to it, all you have to do is you just basically uninvite them from the Fusion team project is really all you have to do. You just have to uh, disable them and then their, their access is turned off to that project. So uh, it's really relatively easy to set up, relatively easy to, to turn off. That's probably one of the benefits it has over let's say vault replication, because there's a lot of things you have to set up for vault replication. You have to have multiple different servers. You have to have the right type of SQL and the same versions of SQL at each site. And there's a whole list of things that you've got to make sure they're set up. You got to have, um, you know, the right amount of latency between the sites and it can get really complicated here. Um, I don't know if you were able to see, but my goodness, we were as we were passing files around, they were almost instantaneously in the right spot. There really wasn't a whole lot of latency, but it's all based off of your internet speeds and things like that. So before we wrap it up here, we'll take a uh, we'll take a look at some questions. Since we're re-recording this, we'll actually just pull the questions from the recorded version and 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 we'll kind of take a look at those now. So I do have a question here uh, in that that blower I am, do I have any content center files or library files in that assembly? Everything in this folder was, or everything in that assembly was in this folder. So if I do, did have some sort of content center files or something like that, it would just be an additional mapping. So in vault here, if I had, um, a library or something like that. It would just be an additional mapping out to that, um, to the Fusion team site, and then the user could then utilize that as well. So uh, there weren't weren't any, but I actually have tested that um, with with other scenarios, and it's just an additional mapping. So instead of having one folder, I would have that folder, and then also like my content center files or a library folder. Thanks for the question, Mike. All right, so I do, I do have a couple questions here. So uh, are you able to sync or how could you suggest using vault change orders? So right now it's just on the, the, the CAD files, I believe. I haven't tried a change order. Uh, I can take a look at that and kind of get back to you, Mike. 
I don't know that it will allow me to synchronize. It's right now it's just files. So like if I try to create uh, a mapping again. Now, if those change orders were, were able to create, generate PDFs of those, um, we should, we would be able to, yeah, you can see here, it's just basically my, it's kind of limited to my CAD files. But if you, if you had an ECO or something like that and you generate a PDF off of those or uh, some other viewable, you could then synchronize those. But as of those other, you know, the items, the change orders, things like that in the vault, it's really right now just the CAD files or I guess files in general, um, CAD files, PDFs, you know, anything else that you might have. All right, so one other question here, what does the user at the other end need? Just the 125 seat uh, computer requirements. So basically, if I'm the receiver of the data, I would basically need to have basically Fusion Team, which would then give me the ability to kind of log into that cloud. Um, if, depending on, on your arrangement, that could that seat could even be owned by the main company that owns the vault too, and you're just kind of, you share that seat with them. Or you could require them to buy their own seat. That would get them the ability to get into the, to the Fusion Team site, see the data. Now, if they need to then, um, get that like into AutoCAD or Inventor to actually act on that data, then yeah, you might need to, they would also need some sort of CAD application. Fusion Team really is just a, a seat into that, that viewable, a seat into that process. Um, it doesn't really carry anything like Inventor, AutoCAD, whatever, you would still need those seats. Um, and then computer requirements would be more dictated on what, uh, what CAD applications are they using? They're really, this is a very small application. The desktop connector is just a few megabytes and it's the thing kind of doing um, the synchronization down to my C drive, but I don't even need to do that. If I don't care about it synchronizing down, I don't even need to install the desktop connector. I could manually download and manually upload as I'm working on files. Steve, something interesting there I think you touched on was, uh, it if you're just trying to look at those files, like maybe you just wanna share this uh, from Vault with a customer, uh, you know, you could upload that file. They don't need anything but a tablet, a phone, any machine to log into Fusion. They can view that file right in Fusion 360 mm -hmm. on any device. Yeah, absolutely. Fusion, that Fusion team is basically, it's essentially a website. So any mobile device that can, uh, that you have. And we actually, we had a customer last week asking about different ways to view vault data when they go on site. And we said, well, that's one option. You could push all the files out to the cloud site, take your iPad on site, and then be able to view them from there. So that was one option we pitched them because that, that it definitely is capable of that. Okay. All right. Uh, that is really all the information I had to, to cover. If you guys have any other questions, you know, feel free to, to send those into that, to the question panel. I'll try to, to cover those. I can hang around for a little bit longer. Uh, it's not a big deal. If you have questions, you wanna reach out to us outside of that, feel free. Um, most of you should know my email address or just call the office and ask for, for Steve and I'll do my best to answer your questions and um, and kind of go from there. But uh, I really appreciate all you guys tuning in to check, take a look at uh, Project Sync. It's definitely a neat uh, tool that I really didn't know much about and I was thankful that I kind of got a chance to look into it and kind of see uh, how this works. And it's I was kind of blown away at how easy it was to use and set up. We do have uh, some customers using it currently, not a ton, but uh, definitely a lot of Vault uh, customers out there that are using Vault Professional already that could start using this almost immediately. Uh, a few customers still got Workgroup or, or Vault Basic, so it would require a little bit of an upgrade to get to that point. Um, so, uh, so definitely some possibilities. One last question here that we've got, I see that, uh, the, the person asked, I saw you're using Vault 2021. Does Vault Pro 
2020 have the same uh, ability. This goes back to Vault Professional 2019. So all of them realistically have the same functionality. So 2019, 2020, 2021, pretty much the same thing in all of them. Uh, the Fusion side, the Fusion team side is not changed. It's just a different um, application. Actually, one thing to point out here is when I went from, I actually started using this when I was in 2020. Um, all I did is I upgraded the 2021. My desktop connector stayed there. I obviously had the new job processor, um, but realistically, like the, the desktop connector and the Fusion team, there's really no upgrades there. And these actually go back to 2019. It was, uh, I, I can't remember if it was at the, the release of 2019 or if it came in one of the packs that came out later, but yeah, it goes back to 2019. All right, well, thank you guys very much. Um, next week, Jared is going to be giving you a what's new in Inventor 2021. So that should be a great presentation. Uh, please, for, please look out for that one. I know that I'll be doing another one here in about two weeks on some of the new CAM functionality that you already have access to as part of the product design and manufacturing collection. So uh, look for that one as well. In a couple weeks, I'll be talking about some CAM. Uh, thank you guys very much and hope to talk to you guys real soon.